he would wander off, you know, if it wasn't where he wanted to be, he would just leave um, without giving me the verbal or the, the cue that I'm ready to go. So um, around two and a half, I, he had a great, I had a great pediatrician um, and I expressed my concerns to her. And, you know, when you go in, you do a, a, a questionnaire, is he saying this amount of words? Is he doing this? Is he doing that? And I expressed my concerns to her and she led me to um, Wake County. We were living in Wake County at that time, their special education program, which was a great program, great program. So we got him involved in that and um, he started preschool. Um, he was starting to develop words. He didn't really start talking until he was about four years old. In Wake County Public Schools, they did diagnose him um, on the autism spectrum. And that's when we began to um, dive into the world of autism. Um, and so we figuring out, you know, what's best for him, what should, what should his school look like, or what should home look like, you know, what's his schedule, that type thing. Um, so he's only 10 now, so we, um, are still figuring things out, right? We're still joining support groups. I, I just recently joined a support group for, for mothers, um, with children who are on the autism spectrum. Um, we're still, you know, every year we critique and we modify his um, individual education plan and we're still finding services for Dawson uh, for him to um, develop his social skills. Education wise, he um, is doing very well in school, proud of him in school, Just social piece. He says, I don't want any friends, but he also doesn't have the tools to socially interact with other children his age to where he can um, engage in conversation with them, right? And if you watch him, you can tell he wants to, or especially um, I noticed him Saturday, some boys were talking about football and he loves football. He can tell you all about it. He loves sports, period, right? He can tell you about hockey, tell you about football, basketball, whatever. He, he loves sports. And he wanted to, it's almost like he wanted to tell the boy, no, that's not right. So and so and so won, but he just couldn't. It just wasn't connecting, and he started like fidgeting, and he was grinning so big. And I wanted to say, "Go tell him, go tell him. you know you saw that game. Just you go tell him." And he just looked, and then he changed his his um attention changed to something else. So um, and that's just where we are right now. Ten ten years in the game, and I know we um probably we may have mothers on who have older children. Um, who may be on the autism spectrum or older children, adult children who may have some um, disability or, or an, a mental health diagnosis. But I want my, my tools or my, my encouragement diagnosis, right? Um, I think as mothers, we are, we know our children best, right? We may know them better than their teachers. We know them better than um, their grandmothers. We may know them better than aunts or uncles. We know our children, right? So my encouragement is to take notice, right? When you notice something that you may not think is okay, and I, I don't like to use the word normal because my normal may be different from from Miss um, Bonnie's normal or different from Venus's normal. Normals are different, right? So if you notice something, but we all know what um, what the expectations are, right? We're able to know what is appropriate at certain ages in life. So if you are as a, a parent of a young child or an adult child, if you notice some differences, take heed. So take notice, take heed. Taking notice means that I identify, I can tell that my son is not, he's, he's five, he should be doing this by now, right? So let me figure out what's best for him in this community. I've noticed that my son who used to do so, my son was very outgoing. He had, he was doing this in school and this in school and this in school. He's graduated college and now he wants to stay in bed all day. 
take notice, right? What happened? Something happened. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it's that we, that's, that's point one, take notice, right? And then when I say take heed, that means my, my um, aspect was let me find services for my child, right? I want my child to be a successful man. I want him to um, do what makes him happy. I want him to know Jesus Christ for himself. I want him to have a relationship with other people. Um, so let me take heed. Let me put in place those things that are necessary for my child to develop as a person, right? Not for my child to be normal, because what's normal, right? Not for my child to be perfect, not for my child to, um, to you know, be like Jace or be like Devin, but I want my, my Dawson to be the best Dawson he can be, right? So take heed. And then I say, <laughs> take over, right? So you know what your child needs, right? You know, um, the, once you gather your information, once you develop, you know, a plan of action, then take over. It's all about checking in to see if the things that I've put in place or the things that I've thought of are working, right? So if I notice that my child or my son, my, my and if I'm talking to adult, my adult son, seems to be battling a little bit depre of, of depression. As an adult, we can't make them do anything, right? But we can say every time you see him or every time you call, how are things going? Did you call so-and-so-and-so that I was telling you about? Did you look into so-and-so-and-so? I'm praying for you, okay? Or as, as my child, Dawson, who I have to speak for, checking in with his teachers, does Dawson seem to be losing focus in class? It's time for us to update his IEP because they have a whole bunch of children. I have one Dawson. So let me make sure that I'm advocating for my child the best way that I know how. Right. I think it's important too that I know that a lot of our speakers have talked about the villages that we have. And I think it's important that we identify a group of people that we can um, trust with our information, that we can trust with our vulnerabilities, right? That we can um, that can identify with us. So um, you know, whether that's a support group with mothers of similar um, or adults with a similar um, issues in their family or whether it's um, knowing that I have somebody that if I say, um, when we found out Dawson is, was on the autism spectrum, having a group of friends that will say, oh, I may not know what it means, but next time we talk, I'll have done my research and I can tell you so and so and so. Um, also, a model, finding a model like someone that you can, um, I use, I'm using my hands a lot, I feel like sitting on them, um, somebody that you can um, model what the behavior or what you should be doing, right? I don't know if um, Jenny's on, but my cousin Jenny, I don't even think she knows this, but I hang on to a lot of things that she says, <laughs> She has, um, she has a son who, and I don't think Jenny doesn't mind. He, she, her son, her second to oldest son, um, is in college, and he is on um, the autism spectrum. And I hang on to what she said when she, when he was in school, and she said, no, he wasn't in this class, or no, he wasn't doing this, or I did, I put him in this program. I'm looking it up and like, okay, so, cause I want Dawson to go to college one day. That's that's a hope for me. I want um, him to be a successful, successful individual. So I'm hanging on, I'm finding, I found a model. Jenny, you're my model, <laughs> my parenting model um, that of what I need to do for my child. So my three points were take notice, take heed and take over. Help, help your children the best way that you know how. Everybody has a smartphone now. Everybody has a computer. And Google knows a whole lot more than I do about autism. I'll Google something in a minute and say, you know, should what, where should we be right now, right? And praying that 
Lord, your will be done in Dawson's life and in my life that I am the parent that you have called me to be, as well as my husband, you know, making sure that, you know, he's at all the IEP meetings and he knows, you know, Dawson's getting this assessment and Dawson's going here and, you know, that he's, he's well aware of what's going on as well. Um, trying to look at my notes here if there's anything else. I think that's it. I don't know. So it's just take heed, take notice, take heed and take over and do do the best that you can with, you know, the Lord's help, your support team and your villages. Amen. Amen. Um, take notice, take heed and take over. And I was saying Melanie was speaking from, you know, a mom with um, a son with autism. And that can be from any group anywhere where we're supporting our children take notice of what they're going through and, and especially if we think about our black sons now so I was looking at Jenna's chat at Jenna's comment if you think about our black sons now take notice of what's going I mean they could be from you know 10 to 25 take notice what's going on around them and then um, take heed and then take over be that advocate for them in the different situations. Now you said something, you said, um, get that village, get in that village, people who we can trust with our vulnerability. That's mm -hmm. that pretty awesome. That was, uh, and Katrina Swan said, that's an awesome message. And it was an awesome message. I'm gonna pause right here for just a minute. And you guys let me know if I'm, if I'm breaking up. I've got poor internet connection, um, connectivity. So I'm gonna stop right here to see if there are any comments for anybody just coming from any um, perspective. Not necessarily autism, but if it's autism, yeah, coming from that perspective. Any comment or any thing that anybody can share that they want to share with us tonight. Any questions? I don't have a comment about autism, but I do want to tell Mel that she did a wonderful job and her her um, information was so relevant um, that I could glean, I mean, especially that takeover, that thing just really encouraged <laughs> my spirit and my soul because we do have to guard the atmospheres that our children are in. And so that's really what I got from that message. Um, and, and, you know, just because like Mel said, you know, people will, you have to manage your children. Um, your children may not be a priority, um, to other people and that's that's no um, not to them but like she said the teachers got a lot going on and I just even think about that as mothers when we are trying to sow seeds um, in, in our children you know what influences do we want them to have so but you did an awesome job I was very very encouraged it was a great message thank you and, and my son 29 I'm going to take notice you know, when I, when he comes to my, my house, I'll take notice if he's not himself when he comes here and take heed, I'm going to take over it. And how can I take over in a 29 year old's life praying for him? I'm going to stop there and start interceding for him. Hey, Deb. Yeah. <laughs> that was Dawson who was just here. And this is, this is Deb. Okay. Where's Dawson? The, the city. I'll wait to see if anybody else um, have any comments. Definitely Dawson come back. Melanie, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, I think one of the challenges too, when you have older children, mental illness. Yes. And a lot of times, I mean, you don't recognize it immediately unless something drastic happens. And when they're over 18 years old, it's really much more challenging in terms of dealing with the doctors and things. So mm -hmm. as a mother or as a parent, you have to be like that tiger and say, if they tell you no, you say wrong answer because there is an answer that's out there. And you, like you say, you, you take control and in finding that balance between what the doctors can tell you and what they can't tell you. And oftentimes when you're dealing with adults, particularly young adults with mental illness, they don't know what they need and the doctors won't cooperate with you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we may have children who start off as, you know, as you say, quote, normal, 
but things happen in their lives that causes parents to step in to have to take over for their adult children. So it'll say, once you become a parent, you're always a parent, that role in, in your duties kind of change along the way. So we have to keep an eye on our adult children, particularly when they young boys between 19 and 21, and because doctors say that's usually the time when they start to go through uh, issues with mental health. And then we look at the penal system and how many of our young men end up in the penal system, not because they're bad people, but all of a sudden they have mental Ill health issues that are not being addressed. So thank you for your encouragement. Mm -hmm. Good comment. Very good. Uh, Melanie, did, um, this is Ann. You did an outstanding, wonderful job. Um, but I can identify with you with all three of your points. Um, and the thing about it is, you know, I'm not ashamed of what I have been through or going through. And, and we are dealing with a 29-year-old mental illness son. And I had to take note, well, your first point of taking notice, I took notice after he was at Central two years, um, he came back home and then I insisted on him going back the third year. But when he came back after the third year, I just seen him uh, isolate himself from family, mm -hmm. staying in his room, being in the dark room a lot. And I just start watching him and start taking notice. And um, I was in school as well myself. And then I read enough on uh, mental illness or uh, depression and I recognized the signs. And so um, I took heed of the, the warning signs and then I took over, you know, I um, told Brett, I said, Brett, I believe you're going through a depression. I said, I want to help you reach out and get some help. But it went on for a couple more years before he actually admitted that, he, you know, he was dealing with some issues and then um, taking them into the physician and like we were saying, he's a 20, well, at that time, probably about 20, 24, 25. He's 29 now. So it has been a challenge in trying to get assistance with an adult mm -hmm. mental illness patient. But I thank God that I didn't let up as a mother. Like you said, a mother knows their child. Right. And regardless of how old he was, I was not, I was determined not to let him continue to sit back in his room in a dark place. And so I reached out. So I thank you for just reminding me that I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track and I, I'm not letting up. You know, he's still facing some of those issues now, but at least he's identifying, uh, he's acknowledging it. And then we're getting some help for him and he's willing to get the help. And so yeah. I just ask you all, just keep praying for yeah. us as we um, go through this journey with him. But um, like I said, um, as an adult dealing, I mean, as a parent dealing with a, a adult mental illness patient, it is very challenging. It's draining um, because it's like you have to kind of, uh, is a, he's in an adult body, but sometimes being a child like mine. But I know that God has equipped us for this task. And so um, I just encourage all of us, don't, don't be ashamed and and uh, like Mel said, surround yourself with, being, with a village, you know, support groups. And we are in a support, support group as well. So, um, like I said, the, you know, God, God is awesome. You know, you just have to recognize, take heed. Don't, don't shut your eye and say, no, that's just, just a face he's going through or he's, she's going through. Take heed of the warnings and, and get educated on it. And then you, you'll realize that you're not the only one that's dealing with it. Right. Uh, hi, this is Valerie Holloway. I'd like to make a comment. How's everybody? Okay. Um, the point that you were making about um, advocating for your child, and I think Steph hit on it a little bit about um, the teachers have other students, and you know, while your child may not be a priority to them, they are a priority to us as parents. Another piece that I would like to add to that is <clears throat> while we're advocating for our, our children is to also teach them that they have a voice and that they learn how to advocate for themselves as well. Right. Because the older they get, the more they're going to begin to 
kind of pull away from us and need to be a little bit more independent. And so that's a skill that we need to make sure that they're learning for themselves so that they can use their voice to advocate for themselves as well. So I just want to uh, share that and congratulate you, Mel, on an awesome message. Thank you. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. right hey, I'm sorry. It's Miss Venus, and I piggyback on everything that's been said. Mel, you truly really poured out your heart, and thank you. I can identify with Ann and Miss Margot. Um, early on this year, we had an episode with Joshua. They don't have a diagnosis, so we won't, we don't know exactly what he uh, dealing with, but he had a uh, psychosis moment where his mind was not operating right. And if you've never been through that, you never understand uh, what you're dealing with and how to deal with it or what to do. But I've, I thank you for all three points, but mostly when you said your village, because I remember being at our women's prayer breakfast and the enemy was saying, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't let nobody know what you're going through. But the spirit was saying, yes, you do. And I spoke out that the enemy was attacking my son's mind. And Miss Margo came to me afterwards. And she poured into me at that moment of some things to uh, help me and, uh, on this journey. And you listen. And from that moment, we realized you're not in this alone. And there is so much stuff out there that if you don't look for the help or you don't get the help, you won't know what to do. So we joined groups, we uh, took classes and we're armed and ready. Um, we have not had but one episode. And when you have a young adult and they're at that age where they're making their own decisions and they're in denial that something may be going on, that's the other part of the um process too is trying to be able to walk with them in this journey at the same time making sure that you do see what's going on and taking the classes have been the best thing because if you see like Ann said if they're staying in their room or if the mood swings something something that changes you know what to do you even I mean simple information as far as the eating habits it's a lot of stuff you just have to get educated and again not to be um a shame if you're going through because you're not alone and so I'm thankful for you sharing tonight to um remind us we are not alone and to focus on our children now one time he poured his heart out to us and he opened up as early as middle school he was dealing with some things but see when we're thinking if your child stay in their room a lot just be mindful of the switching, the changing that you may see early on in your child's life. Take focus and take heed because it's not always they're playing a game. It's not always they're on the phone. It becomes isolation. It can become depression. It can be anxiety. It can be so much more, but to take heed. But I am so grateful for you tonight and thank you for sharing. I appreciate it so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Venus and Ann and Margo and all of everybody that, that has shared. And uh, somebody made the comment, don't just chalk it up to it's a phase. You know, take notice, take heed, take over. It's not just always a phase. And then just trust, trust God. Um, and I made a really good comment about not comparing your child to another child, but you want them to be the best child the best person the best man that god has called him to be so just you know, being mindful as moms and that's what we do best that's what we do best any other comments well walk in that role grandma you about to lose dawson again do you have a question for him hey dawson thank you she said yeah. thank you for joining you're welcome. And he's gone. <laughs> so Mel made the comment about Dawson um, downloading games. I haven't paid me my um, $85 where Dawson was, I think it was three or four now. Yeah. That's the reason why I have a password on my phone today from Dawson. Just, uh, he didn't, 
I don't think he knew the word free back then, free um, apps and games, but he knew how to download. So, um, you know, he's very talented, very smart. So, and, and that's another thing of taking notice and taking heed, noticing those talents that, they're, that God has blessed them with. Thanks. So much, Mayor. Any other comments from anybody? Um, so somebody said, strong message for all situations, definitely. Great message to our people, our culture, to help encourage. That is a, that's an excellent point, M.A. Jones. We're going to, um, there are no other comments. Any prayer requests? I have a couple of prayer requests now. If you, when, when you get ready to close us out in prayer, just praying for our sons um, that are going through, Margo mentioned, the penal system, just those that are faced with court cases. We're praying for miracles. We're praying um, for health. Just call it Daquan's name for health. God will heal him. God will strengthen him. And then you heard some of the mothers mention just going through. And Stephanie has a prayer request, her family test results. What are we doing the COVID test? Maybe you heard mothers mention mental illness. We're just praying for just sound mind. Pastor Connie Stancil said, awesome message. Thank you, Pastor um, Council. Any comments? Um, any other comments? Pastor Council, no. Miss Lori. Yes, hi, Jeanette. Hey, um, I did want to um, ask if um, we could get a prayer request for Cindy, my cousin Cindy. She's not on call tonight. But um, asking for a prayer request for her and her family. She just wanted me to mention her and her children um, just to pray for them and healing. Um, Miles Satterfield. The loss of his wife. Hmm. We're still praying um, for Lorraine's children. Gail mentioned Derek, her son Derek. Uh, Derek is in Colorado. And I don't know why I was thinking Derek was in New York, near you, Gail. But he's in oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Wow. Uh, Miles Satterwhite's wife is 23. I'm praying for Miles Satterwhite. Satterwhite or Satterfield? Is that two different people? Satterfield. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Again, thank you all for joining. Sorry. Lori, I have a quick question. Since you said Lorraine's sister was on, um, I know somebody asked me the other day about Lorraine's kids and especially Simone. And I don't know if this is the appropriate time to do it because a lot of us know Lorraine's children and she, Lorraine really touched our hearts. So Thank can she you. give us an update on the kids, <laughs> and how they're doing? Sure. Um, we're all doing okay. Um, I am so proud of my nieces and my nephew. They are wonderful. My sister did a great job with them. And as you can see, it still hurts so much. We're two years apart. Uh, we were born two years apart. So I, she, we grew up together. And it's so funny. My youngest son is taller than his... I have two sons and my youngest is taller than his brother. And he's gone further in school. So he calls his brother his big little brother. <laughs> and I always heard him say that. And it wasn't until my sister passed that I started thinking she's my, she's two years younger than me, but she was my big sister. I asked her everything. I got advice. Oh, we lost the sound. Any decisions I had to make, I would always be calling my sister. So I know where my youngest son talks about when he says his big little brother. <laughs> um, but we're hanging in there and the kids are amazing. So they're doing good. Um, 
I only worry, the most I worry about is my nephew because he's alone in Colorado and he took it really hard. He wouldn't, he would come in a room and wouldn't, and would stand up the whole five, six hours and would not sit down. And at first he wasn't really eating anything. So then I started cooking for him, but I reminded him, I know that's the issue my sister had with him or for most of his life. So I would be like, you know, your mother would want you to eat. What can I prepare for you? And then once I started putting it on the plate and putting it down, he would sit down and eat. So he's, I check in with him every week and He's answering the text, which is great. And he'll answer the phone, which was another thing that he didn't always do. <laughs> so at least I'm keeping that communication going. And I'm gonna, I know my sister was planning on visiting him because he had just moved to Colorado. Um, he got a job at Google. So now I have to do that <laughs> to go and make sure that he's okay. But the girls are together. So that's good and I spent two weeks with them and saw how great they were together Sherry's the big sister she checks in what they want to eat every day they sit they watch movies together they watch tv together she checks to make sure that um Simone is doing her work and I see all the two older sisters counseling her on what she's going to be doing for school and how she has she applied for this yet and tell explaining to her the things that she has to do so they're very close and very they're doing pretty good oh great so are the girls here, here in wake forest i'm sorry are the girls here in wake forest they're um they're i'm raleigh. not sure exactly the part they're in raleigh yeah oh, um yeah. sherry had just purchased a home which is so i i was just telling my friend god works in mysterious ways because she purchased a four family home, not married, no children. And now both her sisters are with her and they each have a room. Um, so yeah. well, thank you so much. I know that it was difficult, but we loved Lorraine. She had such a kind spirit and we, tr we truly miss her. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate all her church family had done um, and all that they did, um, it's a blessing. So thank you so much. I took so much of her prayer books with me, <laughs> brought them home with me. And yeah, it's still hard. It's still, it's still shocking and hard. Normally if someone's sick, then you expect it. But the good news is my great aunt turned 104 years old today. Oh, yeah, and she's lucid and everything. Um, she's she lived in home in Brooklyn until last year when she got a bed sore. So she's in a nursing home now. But um, her daughter was able to take a cake up there and um, juices and stuff for the staff and and everything. So thank God, we're thankful for that. She has seven, six sons and one daughter and all seven of her children are alive from age 66 to 78. Wow, wow. So that's a blessing. Yeah. That is a blessing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gail, for that update. Thank you, Marco, for, for um, asking her to do that. We know it was difficult. So Derek Smith is Gail's nephew, Lorraine's son. So just keep Derek Smith in your prayers. Yes, please. And pray faithfully for her children. Thank you. Um, so it is it is so good to see Benita and Womack's picture. I don't see her face, but to see Benita's picture on the on the screen as well. So thank you, Benita, for joining us. As is to see, good to see. Thank you. Yeah, yes. It is um it's such a blessing to just have a community of people on one accord, people who just we just trust in God together with all that's going on in our world and with our sons and with our children. So thank y'all so much for joining us. Now you saw all the different prayer requests in, in the chat. I was thinking that's what you were doing. I saw you looking down. I, saw, I got some. Yeah, okay. I, I got some. <laughs> so Mel is gonna um, close us in prayer. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And we will be talking next Tuesday again, just coming from this, this um, perspective again. And I think I saw Alonzi on the line earlier. I'm not sure if she's still here. But we'll be talking from this perspective as well. Alonzia from Charlotte. Alonzia and her family lives in Charlotte. 
So please join us next Tuesday. Mel's going to close us in prayer again. Everybody, um, sweet dreams. Thank you for calling in, Melanie. All right, let me make sure I'm writing. Okay. So let us pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for this day. Father God, we thank you for this appointed time um, that you knew that we would gather here today and on um, through the, the virtual um, meeting that we will be um, calling on your name, Father God. Father God, we thank you for uh, the vision and the ministry that you have provided to, to my mother. Um, and we Thank you for the participants, um, those who joined in today, Father God. Father God, we ask you just to um, grant us the request of our hearts, Father God. We ask you just to, to grant us um, the desires that, that we have, Father God. Father God, you, all, you know all about each and every one of us, and you know all about our families, and you know all about our children and our, our spouses and the, the people who, who we come in contact with, Father God. You know all about our situations, Father God. You know um, those things that concern us, and you care about what concerns us, Father God. Father God, we come to you right now with our, our list of prayer requests. Father God, we come asking that um, you grant healing to, to those who need healing. We call out Daquan, Father God. We, we ask you just to heal his body, Father God, and make him whole, Father God. We pray for those who um, have a COVID diagnosis and who need some, a touch, Father God, and who needs the healing, Father God. We ask you just to, to grant that, that healing to, to the COVID victims, Father God. Father God, we ask you just to um, heal um, those who just need a healing, Father God, whether it's flu-like symptoms, allergies, diabetes, um, cancer, Father God, you are able to heal, Father God. Father God, you are, are able to heal. And when we do receive those healings, Father God, we will give your name the praise. For we know it was all you, Father God. We give you, we, we will be careful to give your name the praise and give you the honor and the glory that you are due, Father God. Father God, we ask you just to um, bless Cindy and her children, Father God. Just encamp your angels all around her family, Father God. You know exactly what she needs, Father God, because you made her. You know her. That She is yours, Father God. You gifted her, those ch her children, Father God. You um, granted her the responsibility of caring for those children, and you know exactly what they need. You know exactly what um, we've heard the, the mothers talk about um mental mental health concerns with their sons you know what what miss ann needs and you know what um miss venus needs and you know what joshua and barrick um, and brett you know what miss margo needs and you know whomever else is on the line who sons may be suffering from some differences father god father god that some things that are um out of whack whether it's in their in um their mental capacity father god some things that are just that, that have um gone or gone um awry father god you know what the issues and the concerns are father god they are yours you, you made them. They are your children, Father God, and you know exactly what they need. Father God, I ask you just to, to um, bless and comfort Mr. Satterfield, Father God, Miles Satterfield, who had the devast um, devastation of losing his wife, Father God. We pray that you send your Holy Spirit to comfort him and his family, Father God. We pray that you give him the tools that he needs, Father God, to um sustain and to, to maintain and to, to get through this, um, this time filled with grief, Father God. Father God, we pray that you encamp people around him that will lift him up, that will support him, and that will just let him do what needs to be done for him to get to this difficult time in his life, Father God. Father God, we thank you for um, um, Miss Lorraine's sister, Father God, and we thank you for um, Derek, Father God, and we thank you for her children, Father God, and we just ask you just to, to um, 
a, a special prayer for Derek, Father God, out in Colorado, Father God, with his job. And Father God, he doesn't have the, he may not have the familial supports and his um, sisters are here in North Carolina and aren't in New York. He may not have the, them right there, Father God, but we pray that you send your Holy Spirit to encamp all around him, Father God. Father God, that you just wrap your arms around him, Father God, that he feels like that everybody, that the room is crowded with family, Father God, that he can feel your spirit, Father God, and that know that you are with him and that and that his family is supporting him and loves him, Father God. Father God, continue to um, provide him, provide for him, Father God. Continue to, um, to minister to him and to uplift him and to comfort him, Father God. Continue to allow him and uh, continue to build up that response that he will um, respond to Aunt Gail. Continue to respond to Aunt Gail, that he will answer Aunt Gail's call, Father, calls, Father God, that he will continue to do, do so. And if and if anything, if anything ever changes, that Aunt Gail will take notice, Father God, and that she will take heed, Father God, and that she will do what needs to be done to reach out to her nephew, Father God. Father God, we ask you just to bless Laquisha. Um, Miss Benita's sister, Father God, you know exactly what she needs, Father God. We are, she calls um, calls you Father, Father God, and she needs you right now, Father God. And we ask you that you that you supply all of her needs, Father God. Father God, we thank you so much for all that you have done in the lives of our children thus far, Father God. Father God, we, we thank you for um, all the opportunities that you have given us to parent, Father God. And Father God, we know that parenting does not stop when someone reaches 18, Father God. We know that parenting does not stop when someone reaches 21, Father God. We know that parenting does not stop, Father God, and we continue to learn as parents, Father God. Continue to grant us grace, Father God. Continue to grant us mercy, Father God, because we need it, Lord. Continue to give us the tools that we need to, to be better mothers, Father God, to be exactly what our children need, Father God. Father God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us. And we thank you for our children, Father God. And we thank you for everything that you have done for us, Father God. Father God, until we meet next week, Father God, keep us. Keep us, Father God. Father God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you in advance for all the things that you are going to do in our lives, Father God. And if it doesn't get done, we know it's not because you can't do it, Father God, But you, because you can do anything, Lord. Dear Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Melanie. Again, thank you, everybody. Thank Have you. a good night. Good night. Talk with you. You wave your tongue, bye. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome.